uh, I'm not alone. I've, I rep represent here a very prolific and diligent community, many friends and, in, 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 uh, colleague scientists, uh, colleague scientists in, in, the, in the audience here, and a lot of guests um, uh, from abroad. We are well networked in the world, and I believe that um, Israel can be a great promoter of uh, world um, energy uh, challenges. And uh, thanks to very prolific work from uh, the <coughs> ministries, uh, energy, prime minister, uh, science, so I think that, uh, I think that um, um, we can really promote Israeli science and contribute a lot to the challenge of smart mobility and electromobility. And thank you very much. You. Minister of Science and Technology, ministers, the Samson family, board of trustees, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. We are living in a world that is in the need of technological innovations. The global warming is a must-win battle for mankind. We need to embrace new ideas and encourage technologies to evolve in parallel. Neste, with myself and the team, has transformed itself building on strengths developed in traditional oil refining. Now we convert the broad range of renewable waste streams into highest quality advanced fuels saving more than 8 million tons of carbon dioxide annually. We are still on the learning curve, continuously looking for creating new responsible solutions. I is for the nomination, the Board of Trustees for selecting me and the team as industrial innovators for receiving the prize, and especially my team in its entity uh, for all the good work we have done together. It's a great honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everything that we do every day and behind this whole event, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, seven years ago, I called up um, my friends Sheila and Eric uh, Sampson. I think they were in South Africa, and I said, "We have to. We have to change things. We have to. Um, we have to free the world of the stranglehold of oil." And the biggest use of oil is in transportation. So we have to work on changing transportation. And I said, uh, Eric and Sheila, I don't want much of you. Just a million dollar prize a year in perpetuity. And you know what they said? It took them about 60 seconds. They said, OK. I should have asked for two million, but this is Eric and Sheila Sampson. They're extraordinary human beings, <laughs> extraordinary, extraordinary people with tremendous hearts, tremendous minds, tremendous love of Israel, and a tremendous commitment to a great future. And I start with them with uh, a hope uh, for Eric's health. And Eric, I hope we see both you and Sheila here next year. So please get well and come and join us. We need you. Yuval Steinitz, the Minister of Energy, is here. Yuval did some of his own work to reduce our dependence on, uh, uh, on oil. We, I think 60% of our electricity a few years ago was based on oil, and now it's half, 30%. It's one of the quickest declines in the world. That's a decline that has really arise. Uh, Ophir Akuni is the Minister of uh, Science and Technology. You've just seen him. Um, you said that an Israeli should receive the prize. You asked, and it happened, and for good reason, well-deserved. Dr. Renat Bonstein, who's uh, chairing the, uh, the prime minister's office, uh, Fuel Choices and Star Smart Mobility Initiative, uh, Greg Mizell, who's the director general of Karen Ayasod, and all the distinguished guests and government officials uh, and business leaders who are here. So I want to welcome you to the uh, six Prime Minister's Conference on Annual Smart Mobility. Uh, I think this is the largest summit we've had. It includes over 1,000 visitors from abroad, representing more than 35 countries. So what is smart mobility? Well, I'll put it this way. Your children 
definitely your children's children, are not going to believe that we were moving around in such a clunky way. There's no way that they'll believe that it would be for them like the horse and carriage, like the, the buggies that people used to drive. Now, I can tell you from personal experience that we in Israel first believed that we should invest in the traditional car industry. And we did. We actually had a car made in Israel. I remember it 50 years ago when I was a young soldier and later an officer in my unit, and we were given a car. It was called Susita. That means horse. Any of you remember it? You're not that old. Well, it was made of fiberglass. One day, I leaned on it. My elbow went right through, and the fibers really hurt. And of course, we failed miserably. We couldn't compete in scale, not on chassis or engines or tires, and it failed. Now, 50 years later, cars are changing. Soon, very soon, it'll be 85% of the cost of a car will be software and its derivatives. And that makes, means that it's basically becoming, a car is becoming a computer on wheels. Now we can compete, and we do. We have about 500 startups that deal in uh, uh, autonomous vehicles and related technologies. And we're, we've become one of the two or three great centers of uh, this new technology in the world because it's all about big data, connectivity, and AI and the nexus of the three, and there we're producing new industries. It's happening in cyber. By the way, important for this too, as you know. It's happening in digital health, it's happening in precision agriculture, it's happening in everything, but it's happening big time in the question of smart mobility. So what is smart mobility? Well, let's see. Does it make sense for you to buy this big hulk? Big hulk, weighs several tons. 95% of the time you don't use it, it takes up space, it guzzles gas, it pollutes the atmosphere, you're stuck in congestion, in tra in the, uh, especially in rush hours, and there are plenty of those. You could get hurt, and you do, unfortunately people die in this. And you can strain your back, or your backside, whatever. This doesn't make sense. So that's going to change. It is changing in a big way because of big data, artificial intelligence, and connectivity. And we can, uh, we can go well beyond Uber here, well beyond Uber. We can go to something that is so efficient, much safer, doesn't pollute, we want to electrify this, and will get people where they want you to be calling your uh, Preferred AI assistant, you say, get me my car, now. Or you could say, I tried that as prime minister, it never works. You could say, well, no, in 17 and a half minutes. Or you won't have to say anything because it's in your schedule that's uploaded already. And it connects to the cloud and down, and you know all that. It's a question in my mind whether we're going to have deluxe capsules but we'll have capsules, and it'll move around. And some people will want to drive a horse and buggy, same style, that could happen, that's okay. That market will still be there. But most of us will move around, most of us in our lifetime will move around, not in our lifetime, most of us will move around very soon, very soon, in an entirely different way. And here's the thing, we in Israel are not only interested in making these inventions, we want to be not only the first to invent, we want to be the first to use. Now listen to me carefully. First to use. We want all this technology to be tried here, to be broken, it's like breaking in a horse, to be broken into use here. And this uh, today, this morning, we received an offer from a very big company in fact, an association of companies who want to begin this right here in Tel Aviv. And I invite all of those represented here and all those who are listening to me in other companies, in other countries, 
Come to Israel now because smart mobility is here. That's the future. The future is here, and the future is here in Israel. You should applaud for this. I mean, this is important. I believe that it won't take us very long. I think that the rate of pace, the change, the pace of change is moving. Initially, people didn't believe the car companies would get into it. They believed there were other impediments. What is happening now is that all of this is accumulating and moving very, very fast. And there is no reason why we shouldn't do the effort on our part in regulations and facilities and infrastructure and all the things that have to be done. We'll do it because we're absolutely committed to this. We are now, a few years ago, about the same time I called Sheila uh, and uh, <coughs> Eric, uh, I read a book on cyber. It was given to me by one of our preeminent uh, scientists, and it was a novel. It was about a cyber war between two superpowers. You can guess who they are. They never fight. And I read it, and I said, couldn't, couldn't stop reading it. Read it all night into the next uh, day. Took off half a day of work to finish it. Then I called him in and I said, this is it. We have to be, we have to be a cyber power. We can't afford not to be there. And I set a goal that in five years, we would be among the top five cyber powers in the world. Five years later, it's now seven years later, I can say we're not in the top. We're not number five. I'd say we're in the top three, and I tell you we're not even third. Now this means that we can accomplish things. We can do things, and you know how important cyber is for, for mobility and for everything else. We can do things. We have brilliant people, but the most important thing that we have is brilliant people who want to partner with brilliant people, you know, eager to share their ingenuity, their spark of genius with others in this country and around the world. We're changing the world. So I want to uh, invite all of you to join our awardees who represent great minds here in Israel and in Finland, and congratulations to you. But I have two messages for you today. They're very brief. The first is to the people in Israel, we're going to continue, continue to innovate. And to everyone else outside of Israel, Partner with Israel. It makes tremendous sense. It makes damn good business. And the last thing is this. Because of Israel's success, because of Israel's growth as a global technological power, we are reaching out to a lot of countries. Our position in the world has changed. Our diplomatic horizons are expanding beyond belief. Very fast. Last uh, week, the Vice President of China was here for three days. Three days. Uh, we have, uh, before that, we had senior, the, the <coughs> Prime Minister of India was here for four days. I want to reciprocate, for four days. The Prime Minister of Japan was here, Abe. In a, a few years, the Japanese investments in Israel grew by 44 times. Something very big is happening in Israel. The same thing we're seeing in our contacts because of technology, because of the ability to change the world, water, health, uh, agriculture, IT, transportation, every field, because of this, countries around the world, in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, all those countries are coming to Israel. And the reason I'm telling you that is that I have to leave this right now because a small country of 207 million people is interested in cementing ties with Israel. Its recently elected president, as of yesterday, is waiting for a phone call from me in about six minutes. I'd like to have that market open up to Israel too. The whole world is coming to Israel, so should you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.